Hello, this is the Stories Beside channel. I release videos every day for you. Subscribe and click the bell. Adriana paced cheerfully down the street toward the square. There Betty was waiting for her, a caregiver from the orphanage where the girl had grown up. It wasn't that they were friends, but in fact, the pensioner was Adriana's only soulmate and guardian angel. The girl had been attached to her since childhood. She told her all her sorrows and joys, shared her plans and dreams. So today, learning such stunning news, Adriana immediately called Betty out of habit and arranged a meeting. Well, she couldn't help but share it with her. The girl bought two cups on the way, coffee and cakes, and when she saw the pensioner from a distance, she waved to her. She was sitting on their favorite bench at the back of the park and feeding pigeons, slices of loaf. Birds surrounded the woman and pecked the bread with pleasure, cooing loudly. An elderly woman talked a little and suddenly noticed, don't keep me in suspense. Adriana, why are you shining like a polished samovar? The girl happily blurted out at once. You won't believe this, Betty, but today our superintendent Michael offered me the position of head nurse, so I'm going for a promotion. It's really great. This is the best day of my life. Betty was kind of taken aback. I mean, you've only been on the job for three weeks. That's weird. Adriana got angry. Don't I deserve it or don't I deserve it? That's what he said. He said he was happy with my work. I thought you would be happy for me and you suddenly lost your mood. And the girl shut up frowning. She felt bitter and hurt that the closest person did not want to share her joy. The wise woman noticed everything and calmly, peacefully began to explain. Wait, Adriana, do not be offended by me. You know how much I love you. I put you in this clinic because I'm sure of you. Just understand, I've lived my life, I've seen a lot. Well, it doesn't happen so easily that a new employee is offered such a position out of the blue. There's got to be a catch. Maybe your supervisor has a crush on you. The girl gasped in indignation. What are you talking about? Michael is old enough to be my father. Of course, the man is still strong, but he's married. They say he has a daughter. How could you think such a thing? Huffed about him. Of course, rumors vary, but it's just jealous girls. Nurses talk. I can't believe it. The woman just shook her head. Well, if that's the case, congratulations. I believe in you. You can do it. Just please be careful though. Just in case, just in case, they hugged each other, drank aromatic coffee in a friendly way, and remembered for the hundredth time how Adriana came to the orphanage, how she decided to become a doctor, and much more. Soon the girl said goodbye and ran home. After all, she had an early shift tomorrow. And Betty sat for a long time and went over the episodes of this girl's difficult fate in her memory. Twenty years ago, Betty was just on duty. It was raining heavily outside the window, with clouds drumming on the windows. So the woman did not immediately hear an inaudible squeak. She listened attentively and thought it might be a kitten crying. So she went to look. When she opened the door, she was dumbfounded. Right on the porch of the orphanage was an old basket. In it, among some rattle, someone was squealing, crying, and floundering. Without a second thought, Betty took it quickly into the warmth and began unwrapping it. She was in shock. My God, it's a baby. So skinny and scruffy. Soaked. I hope he doesn't get sick. What kind of heartless people would take their own child in such bad weather? That's how the beasts threw it away, not the people. I think it's a girl. Hello, sunshine. What's your name? The baby only cried loudly to the point of hiccups. Blinking often, she couldn't say anything. And so a new little girl of three appeared in their orphanage. Adriana called her Betty, since she had no documents. A search for her parents yielded nothing either. He was holding a bouquet of flowers. Adriana, noticing him, changed her face and cried out. Why was he here? He was not invited. Ethan, I am afraid he will not throw anything out of revenge. Kathy, seeing her ex-husband, had mixed feelings of joy and bitterness and anxiety. 
Only Emily was pleased with her father in all sincerity. She ran up, hugged him, and hung on his neck. Michael walked up to the newlyweds and said quietly, I understand that I am not welcome at this wedding. I'm only here for a moment, Adriana. I've come to realize and understand a lot of things this year. I don't expect forgiveness, but I want to say from the bottom of my heart, be happy, you deserve it. Kathy, can I talk to you for a minute? He turned to his ex-wife. Michael got up the courage to go outside and said to Kathy, I'm a wretch, I've done a lot of things. I didn't appreciate you in my life and frankly thought I didn't love you. That's true. But when you left, I almost lost my mind. I almost drank myself to death, barely made it. And all the time I lived with only one thought, that someday I will meet you and my daughter and ask you to forgive me. It turned out that all those nurses and maidens meant nothing. And without you, it's dreary, extreme. Forgive me if you can and let me see my daughter. I miss her madly. And also know that I love you. And as it turns out, I don't need anyone but you. Tears came to Kathy's eyes at what she had heard. She had waited her whole life, one might say, for these words from her husband. She said quietly to Emily, you can visit, come and visit us, and we'll see. After Michael left, the fun continued. And Adriana and Ethan said, almost simultaneously, without collusion. And so it happens, Adriana thought, dancing a slow dance with Ethan, that she was even grateful for this rascal. After all, if it hadn't been for that incident, she and Ethan would never have met. She pressed herself gently against her husband and kissed him passionately. The guests immediately picked up on this and shouted, clapping their hands. Bitter, bitter. Betty admired the beautiful Adriana. She looked so pretty in that airy white dress and thought to herself, at last my favorite girl was happy. She deserved it. Kathy stroked her daughter and quietly soothed her. You know what, Emily? Let's you and I go to the sea for a while to relax, and then we'll see. Emily glowed and kissed her mother on the cheek. Michael was pacing like a hunted animal. He was torn with anger and hatred. He cursed Adriana to himself in every way. What a cold snake she was. So quiet it seemed. And she'd managed to pull off the whole thing herself. Why the hell did I need her at all? I'm an old fool. And Kathy, too. She went ahead and filed for divorce. Disgraced the whole world. No, she didn't. She won't get anything. She'll go out without a dime. The man's been through everything. Even the most run-down hospitals in town looking for work. But they wouldn't take him anywhere. Not even as a surgeon. Benjamin did his best to drink more and more. Expensive alcohol was replaced by some kind of surrogate. A month later, the doorbell rang. There was a man on the doorstep. Good afternoon. I am a lawyer and trustee of your ex-wife. The divorce decree will divide all the property acquired during the years of life together in half. The house is also for sale. Read it and sign it. Michael exploded. What on earth is this? I don't agree. It's all mine. But the law is the law. With the proceeds, Kathy bought a cozy little house on the coast and moved with her daughter to the sea for good. She was hired as a music teacher at the school. Emily went to college. Kathy could not and did not want to return to her hometown. It was painful and bitter. And the sea heals all wounds of the soul. Adriana and Ethan also began a serious relationship. Her joint experiences of adversity brought them together so strongly that they could no longer imagine life without each other. A year passed. Kathy seems to have outwardly reconciled and calmed down. Life went on as usual, but as before, at night she often thought of her husband. She dreamed that the three of them were bathing in the warm sea. He was gently kissing her, caressing her. The touch was so explicit that she jumped up not understanding it completely. Was this a dream or a reality? Kathy told herself a hundred times, forget him. He's a bastard and a scoundrel, and there is no forgiveness for him. Stop thinking about him. Stop torturing yourself. 
but my heart still ached and ached, and I often wondered how he was alone, or maybe not alone at all. After all, he had a million of those women. Did he remember them with his daughter? After all, no matter how you look at it, his whole life was spent with her husband. And it wasn't just the bad moments. Emily, I asked Kathy quietly once in a while, do you remember your father sometimes? I miss him so much. He loves me. I know he does. And we didn't even leave him an address. Michael, too, had realized many things during the year and his anger and hatred had gradually been replaced by unbearable sadness and loneliness. He never imagined that he would miss his wife and daughter so much. Turns out all those fleeting affairs and infatuations were such a moment. He always knew there was a faithful and devoted Kathy waiting for him at home. A hearty meal, comfort and care, only he didn't appreciate it all. And how he missed his daughter. Words can't describe it. He was ashamed that she knew the dirty truth about his affairs. I bet she hates me now. Often, he thought. The next events unfolded quite unexpectedly. Adriana and Ethan decided to get married. And of course, they could not help but invite Kathy to the celebration. They sent her a telegram inviting her to the wedding, hoping that she would come. Kathy was very happy. So was Emily and they decided to go and visit their parents as well. And then it was deja vu. In the midst of the banquet, Michael walked in. The man had lost a lot of weight. He'd lost weight. There was no trace of his former glitz and glamour. I believe that we are no longer husband and wife. That's one. And such a man is not worthy to be the head doctor of the clinic. Let's take a look. The tape lasted 20 minutes. The half-drunk manager bragged about his exploits. When the show ended, there was an awkward pause, and then the audience erupted. Everyone turned to Michael. He blushed like a boiled cancer and left the conference room like a scalded man. Then, emotionally, he came back and screamed in agony. This is all a lie. Do not believe this viper. It's all rigged. Adriana said calmly into the microphone I could confirm everything in court if necessary. The bastard invited me into his office, told me to help him sort out the paperwork, and literally attacked me, ripped my blouse. But I miraculously escaped his clutches, I still can't get over it. If Ethan hadn't given me a ride home, I don't know how it would have ended. I was cornered, afraid to leave the house, unable to go to work. All I had to do was to get this scoundrel out in the open, but I never would have done it on my own. Kathy helped me, and Ethan had been lied to and cheated too, and tears came to the girl's eyes. Ethan joined in too. I'm not going to shut up either. I was kicked out after 10 years of honest work just for helping a poor girl get home. And you, Benjamin, didn't even try to look into it. You made me look like a thief. All right. God be your judge. What followed was a deafening scandal. The result. Michael was kicked out of the clinic, despite his merits and professionalism. Ethan and Adriana were reinstated, apologized, and paid liquidated damages. Kathy had an unpleasant conversation with her daughter. Emily was 15 and going through an already difficult age. And then there was her parents' divorce. The girl was angry and yelled at her mother. It's all your fault, Mom. If you hadn't gotten involved in this whole thing, no one would have known anything. You stood up for this, Adriana. And you thought of me. I was left without a father. How will we live now and where? I don't want to. I want to live like I used to. Kathy first tried to caress the girl, Emily. Don't shout. I understand your pain and misery, but I am just as bitter. Don't you understand? I can't live with Daddy. Knowing what he's done to daddy, no one's going to. You can see him if you want to. Come here, my girl. And the woman wanted to pet and hug the child. But she pushed her mother away and ran out into the yard crying. Maybe I should have prepared her in such a harsh way. Should I have lied? How could I explain it to her? God, her whole life had gone to hell. We should get out of town for a while. Let things calm down, the woman decided. When the girl came home late at night, her grandfather was waiting for her in the hallway. He quietly called her into the kitchen. 
She followed him, sat down on a chair, and grudgingly prepared to listen to a lecture. Grandpa calmly began to explain to her granddaughter the simple truths of life. Emily, look, you are now 15, and the girl who your father wanted to hurt is only 20. She is a little older than you. Imagine for a moment the same thing someone was trying to do to you. How's that? Creepy scary. It's hard enough for your mom. I mean, she loved your father very much, and now her life is ruined in an instant. So have pity on her. Don't be selfish. Time will pass. Everything will calm down and get better. And you will see your father. Emily thought about it, went over to her mother, hugged her, and whispered, I'm sorry, mom. I was wrong. I just feel so bad. Why did he do that? Why did he do it? Doesn't he love us at all? And she sobbed on my shoulder finally letting her childish grief out. Michael woke up as if in a fog from a persistent knock on the door. He twisted his head sleepily and had no idea where he was. He was dead thirsty and aching from sitting in a sedentary position. He glanced at the remains of the banquet and the half-filled flute of champagne and began to remember everything. Here, he and Adriana had been drinking. There she was undressing. And then, and then what? Total blackout. How much fun did he have? Did he remember what they had or didn't have? Nothing came out. Just darkness before his eyes. Shit. I had to work so fucking hard. I must have had too much alcohol. Where's Adriana? Did she leave? The man kept knocking on the door, rubbing his aching temples to open it. Who the hell did the knocking take so long? On the threshold stood the hotel administrator with a maid. He tactfully said sorry, but the room is paid only until noon. And now it's evening. We need to do the cleaning, or you can get an extension, or leave the room. The manager left the hotel, got into his car, and could not understand it. How could he pass out for almost 24 hours? It was strange. Was it not Adriana's handiwork? He had no memory at all. Yeah, first time in such an idiotic situation. He decided he didn't need to think about that now. Tomorrow was a crucial day. He needed to get himself cleaned up and get his thoughts together. Kathy didn't greet him at home. As usual, it was unusually quiet and empty. He looked into his daughter's room, perplexed, and no one was there either. Then he looked through the closets. They were completely empty. What the hell had happened? Where had everyone gone? Kathy, Emily, where are you? Did the man call for his family? On the kitchen table, he noticed a note. There were only a few words. I know all about your affairs and I am filing for divorce. My daughter and I are going to stay with my parents. I don't want to see you. He is furious. He shook this paper in his face and yelled, damn it. How and what did she find out this silly hen? What divorce? That's all I needed on the eve of my promotion. He began frantically dialing his wife's number, then his daughter's. But the answer was everywhere. One caller is unavailable. In a rage, the man tore the note into small pieces. Then he drank, calmed down a little, and decided that that was fine, even better. Let it cool down, Kathy, for a while. And I just get a position and drive her a new car will forgive. Where will she go? The next day, when all the members of the conference were assembled and had already begun to discuss the pressing issues that had been outlined the day before, suddenly the door opened without knocking, and three people entered the hall. They were Kathy, Ethan, and Adriana. All the members of the conference looked at each other in bewilderment and displeasure, showing that it was indelicate to barge in like that. Michael looked pale and changed his face. When he saw the trio, what was the meaning of all this? Why had they come here uninvited? And he broke into a cold sweat, and his fresh shirt became wet in an instant. And Kathy, despite the murmurs, boldly and confidently walked to the podium and picked up the microphone. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kathy. I'm the wife of Michael, our head of surgery, and Benjamin knows me very well. I came here because I was approached by these two innocently injured people, Ethan, my husband's driver and Adriana the nurse from the surgical department. 
Here's the thing. Personally, I had known my husband only on the good side his whole life. And when I was informed that he had harassed this girl Ethan, who saved her in his office, simply kicked her out. I didn't believe it. Really, it sounds wild. But Adriana provided me with irrefutable evidence of my spouse's terrible deeds. I want you all to see this videotape right now on the eve of his promotion. Why do I personally want it? You ask me, and I'll tell you. After I found out what my husband is doing behind my back and yours, by the way, Benjamin. Oh, really? What about your wife? Doesn't she have any idea? Aren't you afraid that the doctor in charge will find out? Michael had another drink, and he was completely off his rocker. Don't be ridiculous. I married my fool when I was young. I was stupid. And only because her father had a high position in the ministry. If you only knew how disgusted I've been with her all these years. A failed musician. She and her daughter live off me. Let her be content with that. I don't give a damn about the head doctor. I go behind his back and do all sorts of things. You wouldn't dream of it. And he's still elderly, signing all the papers without even reading them. What an idiot. And soon I'll take his place. So you're proud, Adriana. What does a man like me offer you to relax? Or did you think that the position of head nurse? I do you for pretty eyes. No, you'll have to work it off, my dear. I think we'll start right now. Come here, sweetie. Adriana was shaking with fear and hatred of that pompous savage. But she knew now she could not give herself away. The crucial moment was approaching. In a sweet voice, she said as you say, Michael, now just one more drink. And I'll take a quick shower and be all yours. She quickly poured sleeping pills into his shot glass and began languidly unbuttoning his jacket. And the manager enjoyed the spectacle. He drank and told everything, not shy about his machinations. What's there to be afraid of? That little brat knows nothing about such things anyway. But in her eyes he's almost a superhero now. Adriana half-naked sent him an air kiss and whispered don't miss me soon, and rashly rushed to the shower. She clicked the door shut and leaned her back against the wall, her heart pounding out of her chest. Large drops of sweat rolled down my back and temples my thoughts jumped from one to the other. And then what? What if he didn't fall asleep? What to do? Scream through the wall, of course. But whether he would hear, whether she would have time, and she listened, the silence seemed silent. Maybe she really is asleep already at this time. Ethan in the next room did not find himself. What was taking so long? Why didn't Adriana knock on his door like she had agreed? Maybe something had gone wrong. Just thinking about it made his blood boil. He wanted to immediately spit on everything, break into their room, kick the bastard, and grab Adriana and run away. He was nervous and nervous to the extreme. Finally, there was a knock at the door, and he rushed to open it. On the threshold stood a terrified, pale Adriana with a rush. She threw herself on his neck and burst into tears. He was taken aback that Adriana, he had done something to you. Where is that brat? I'll get him now. She shook her head negatively. No, we made it. Ethan, he's asleep. Here's the tape. Let's get out of here. He stroked her head like a baby, breathing in the strong scent of her hair and whispering. All right, all right, calm down, my little one. It's all over. You did well, my brave girl. Now that bastard could not get away. And suddenly the boy himself, not expecting such courage, succumbed to his feelings, kissed the girl hot and passionately. They could not tear themselves away from each other for a long time, enjoying this moment. When Kathy watched the tape, she physically felt sick and vomited violently. What kind of creature? Turns out he never loved me, ever. Not even in my youth, and I'm an idiot, and all these years I've been saving my family. What family, I ask you? How do I survive this shame? How not to break down? What to tell my daughter? There was one last decisive round in this battle to tell everyone the truth. Kathy, Ethan, and Adriana began to prepare and think hard about how and what to say. On the appointed day, 
Kathy arrived early in the morning and began to prepare Adriana for the big event, carefully putting on her makeup and picking out the right outfit. The women argued and tried on a lot of things, twirling in front of the mirror. As a result, she looked at herself in the mirror. Adriana was upset. Kathy, this is no good. I look like a fallen woman. It disgusts me. What kind of crazy makeup is this? I've never walked like this in my life. Ethan walked in, froze on the threshold and opened his mouth. I mean, it's amazing. But I'm not letting Adriana go anywhere dressed like that, or she'll be attacked before she gets there. Ladies, let's be a little more modest. A wave of wild, unbridled jealousy suddenly swept through him as he looked at Adriana in such an unfamiliar and colorful outfit. She was wearing a black, short top and a short, bright red skirt. He wondered to himself, what on earth is the matter with me? What do I care? We're not even dating, and I'm as turned on as a bull. But the thought of having that creepy guy staring at his Thumbelina made him want to call the whole thing off. That had never happened to him before. There you go. Kathy objected. Don't you see, we need to get him so worked up that he'll tell us what we want to know. And this outfit does just that. As a result, we chose a stylish tight pantsuit with an open neckline. It turned out very tempting, but not so vulgar. In his purse, Ethan slipped Adriana's sleeping pills 100 times told how to use them and a gas can just in case. Adriana took a few sedative pills, but it had no effect on her at all. She was a little shaky, and everything was turning over in her mind. It seemed to her like some unreal adventure with an unknown ending, and that made it all the more frightening. Michael rejoiced after his conversation with Adriana. At last, all his lustful fantasies would come true. He both hated the saucy girl and wanted her badly. Never before had a supervisor been so looking forward to the evening ahead. In the middle of his shift, Michael drank heavily for courage and walked calmly to the hotel. Brazenly and without knocking, he burst into the room. The light was soft and subdued. Adriana stood by the window and gazed thoughtfully out at the night city. She was so seductive in that suit, accentuating all her feminine charms and God's breasts made one go crazy from such views. Everything inside was on fire. But the man decided not to repeat the past mistake and said ingratiatingly, well, hello, my chick, you're just divine. Adriana smiled charmingly. Good evening, Michael. Thank you for the compliment. Let's not be like last time. We're not savages. Sit down, have a drink, and let's have a little chat. Do you mind? The man sat down grudgingly at the table. His favorite liquor, caviar sandwiches, and fruit were all laid out to the highest standard. He gave it all a quick glance and said, I see you're prepared. I appreciate it. Well, maybe you're right. Let's have a drink. You'll loosen up and you won't be throwing ashtrays at me. He uncorked the liquor and poured himself and Adriana a drink. The girl raised her glass and started talking. Yes, that was awkward. I'm sorry, but it was just a fright. I've never had such a respectable man before, and you must have an army of admirers. Isn't that right? The man drank a volley of cognac. Adriana only drank a little. He got very tipsy. He fell back in his chair and got carried away. What did you think? No woman had ever dared refuse me before you, just so you know. I've got half the squad as lovers, and not only ordinary sisters like you, but by the way, some of the higher ranking ones also asked, begged, and then nothing, I even liked it. I'm a monster in bed, and he began to list the names. Adriana made round eyes. I am furious and have no idea how to explain to my daughter who her father really is, Adriana replied sadly. What to do, who to complain to, just the head doctor who's going to believe me. I just worked a month in the clinic and your husband all his life. Ethan, I'm sorry. He got hurt because of me. He's been lied to too. Made him look like a thief and he saved me and gave me a ride home. I'm afraid to leave the house as it is. What if your husband tracks me down? Kathy reassured the girl, do not be afraid of anything. 
Stay at home for the time being. I have to think about it. Oh, and here's your phone. You dropped it in Ethan's car. And that's what this whole thing was about. It took Kathy a long time to come to her senses after her meeting with Adriana. She wandered the streets and wondered what an impossible fool I was. My whole life I preferred not to see or hear anything. I thought I was keeping my family together, but in reality I was just covering for that lustful bastard. How can he not be ashamed of me and my daughter? And it is clear that this is a brave girl who was not afraid to fight back. Not his first or last victim. How to look at him now and not give himself away ahead of time? I cannot imagine. I certainly cannot go on living under the same roof with such a terrible and duplicitous man. And the daughter, she knows nothing and loves her father. God, it's disgusting, disgusting, and disgusting, like slop poured on my head. Three days later, Ethan called Adriana and asked to see her. Can Kathy and I come over now? There's something to do. We have something in mind. Adriana said yes at once. She wanted to teach the scoundrel a lesson herself, but she was afraid to do it herself. The three of us could do it. There was a heated debate in the kitchen, and a grand conspiracy was brewing. All night, Adriana lay awake wondering whether or not to agree to the venture. Her head was spinning, but she made up her mind. The three of them were ready to go. Adriana dialed Michael's number. She was shaking and pounding. But Kathy encouraged her to be brave. Don't give yourself away. Speak with confidence. Ethan held her hand gently for support. The nurse's body instantly sent shivers, either from fear or from this hot touch. Finally, the supervisor picked up the phone. Adriana boldly began Michael. Hello, this is Adriana. The man took off half-heartedly. And you're the one who showed up. What do you want? You're blackmailing me. And you're about to be severely reprimanded. And if you open your mouth, you'll be kicked out. I'll take care of it, Adriana gasped at this insolence and said with more confidence than you, Michael. I'm very sorry about what happened. I was just really scared. Let's get together and talk about it. I don't want any conflicts at work and I'm willing to do anything. He laughed a lot. Now that's something else. So you've come to your senses. Well done. Tell me where and when. And don't let him show any more character. You'll be nice and smart. You'll be back where you belong. Adriana gave her hotel address and room number before hanging up. She trembled with terrible strength, and the tears flowed down her cheeks on their own. Kathy trembled just as much. She was stunned by her husband's treachery and perfidy. And I did not know him at all. How disgusting. As if I were digging through dirty laundry. You bastard. Wait. I'll give you an unprecedented pleasure. You'll answer for all your actions. You old bastard. Ethan was confused and didn't know who to appease. He felt sorry for both Kathy because the poor woman had lived her whole life in ignorance and everything was ruined for her now. Adriana because he didn't know why himself. But this petite, daring Thumbelina with her huge, long eyelashes touched the innermost strings of his soul. He wanted to grab her and hold her in his arms and not give her to anyone else. Christina dialed the number of the manager's wife. Kathy, good afternoon. This is Christina, your former music teacher. Do you remember that? Kathy was very surprised. After all, it's been so many years. Hello. Of course I remember. Those were my best years. How have you been? How have you been doing? The old woman answered yes. I've been very ill lately. My joints are a mess. Well, my son, he helps me. He buys expensive medicine. He was your husband's driver. Just yesterday he fired him. For nothing. For nothing. That's a shame, isn't it? Kathy was surprised. How could she not know what had happened? After all, Ethan had worked for him for years. The pensioner sighed heavily. That's why I'm calling you. I want you to know the truth about your husband. And then you decide. What to do? A bad feeling came over Kathy. What truth are you talking about? I don't understand anything. 
Christina, your hubby blurted it out. Kathy jumped on the new nurse right in his office. She barely got away and asked Ethan to help her drive her home. That's why my son got kicked out. Kathy was shocked. I don't believe it. That doesn't make any sense. Are you sure about that? The woman sighed. Can you ask Adriana yourself? I'll give you her address. Ethan wrote it down. But you've known me and my son for years. He wouldn't lie to me. If you do think about it, come to me first. There's something Adriana needs to tell you. Kathy sat in a complete stupor and rubbed the address paper in her hands, thinking. And if it's true, my marriage is over. Though it had been over for a long time, really. Michael had come in drunk many times. He smelled of women's perfume, and there were traces of lipstick on his shirt more than once. I was the stupid one who deliberately didn't want to notice anything. Right. He came in yesterday with a bump on his forehead, telling me about a violent patient. So it's true then. No, I need to find out what's going on. So it's just impossible to go on living. And I was stupid. I couldn't understand why we hadn't been intimate for a long time. Either he was tired or exhausted. Now it's clear where the poor guy was losing his strength. Adriana didn't leave the house after what happened, not even to get bread. She was in a deep depression. She just lay curled up on the couch and wept silently. The resentment was suffocating her. God, why am I so unlucky? My parents threw me out like a dog. Only at work I began to succeed. And then this rapist got in my way. What's gonna happen now? Suddenly, the doorbell rings. Adriana flinched. Who could it be? It better not be Michael. I won't open it. She waited a few minutes. There was a quiet knock at the door. The girl mustered her courage and went to the door. Who is there? A woman's voice answered you, Adriana. Open to me. I urgently need to talk to you. The girl opened the door and led a beautiful, well-groomed woman in her forties into the apartment. She looked sad and worried, and she was the first to begin the unpleasant conversation. Sitting down on the couch, my name is Kathy. I'm Michael's wife. It just so happens that I found out that my husband allegedly molested you. It's true. Adriana, flustered, shouted out. What do you mean you've come to find out the truth? So you look, and she undid the button on her robe. Kathy was horrified. There were huge bruises on the poor girl's chest and on the wrists of her hands too. She turned pale and asked quietly, God, Adriana, tell me everything as it happened. It is important for me to know. Adriana cried out and told everything. Your husband is a monster. He ruined my whole life. I was lucky to have an ashtray I threw at him and ran away. That would have made the girl cry. Kathy was in shock. She was looking at this little frightened girl and only now began to realize what a monster she had lived her whole life under the same roof with. The woman said angrily, and are you going to leave it at that? We have to do something. We have to punish him somehow. He smiled cheerfully and answered Kathy, yes. It was nothing. The patient was a violent one, couldn't take the anesthesia, so she went on a rampage. It was funny. She barely calmed down. Don't worry, go to bed. I went to the shower and couldn't get the shivers out of my hands. He spent the rest of the night plotting his revenge on Adriana and Ethan. The next morning he ran to the head doctor Benjamin first thing, and from the doorstep Benjamin. You have no idea what happened. It turns out that my driver Ethan was secretly leaking gasoline and selling it on the side. I accidentally caught this thief yesterday. I say we fire him. We don't need that kind of manpower. And also a new nurse, Adriana, as her exactly yesterday left her post without asking and has not yet shown up for work. I worked half my shift for her. This is unheard of. This has never happened in our clinic. I want that irresponsible person fired too, so that others won't be punished. Benjamin shook his head. What the hell is going on in your department, my dear? You've let the staff down. I thought I'd put you in your place. Don't be so hot to kick everyone out at such a rate. You'll be out of staff altogether. 
If you're going to kick people out every time they do something wrong. All right, the driver agrees. If he steals, we can fire him and find a new one. But Adriana, as far as I know, is a good nurse. Everyone is happy with her. We need to sort this out. In the meantime, give her a strict reprimand. Yeah, give her two weeks leave on her own recognizance, and then we'll deal with it. Maybe there's something wrong with her. Who knows? Unhappy with the outcome of the conversation, Michael wondered how he could find the bastard and get her to shut her mouth so she wouldn't tell anyone what had happened. Otherwise, she would be expected to do anything. Ethan was terribly upset when he found out he had been fired. He scolded himself with the last words. The unfinished night helped the girl. Now he is unemployed. What am I going to tell my mother? After all, she is very ill. Medicines, expensive, are needed. Where can I find a new job with such a salary? When he came home, he sat black as a cloud and in prostration for 20 minutes was stirring the frozen thick tea with a spoon. Concerned elderly mother immediately realized that something bad had happened. She quietly and tactfully asked Ethan, son, what is wrong with you? You don't have a face on you. Something has happened. You share, it will make you feel better. Don't keep it all inside. Ethan sighed heavily. No matter what, his mother would still find out about the dismissal and told her everything as it was Frank, did not conceal anything in the end added. I couldn't help her. You know, mama, she was so frightened. I felt so sorry for her, but was it her fault? And now what? How are we going to live? Where do we look for work? I don't know. And he put his arms around his head. Christina took her son by the hand. Don't blame yourself. Son, you did good. You did the manly thing. I'm proud of you, but I feel sorry for Michael Cathy's wife. I know her well. She was my best student. She had such promise at the piano, but it didn't work out. Soon she got married and gave up her career. That's a shame. You know, I'll have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with her, a woman's talk, so to speak. It would be a blow to her, of course, I suppose. But I'd rather she find out the truth from me than from somebody else. And I'll ask her to influence her husband. We'll see what happens. Ethan disagreed. Mother, don't bring her into this. Maybe she's happy and doesn't know anything. Why traumatize her? Christina nodded negatively. Do you think you can live happily with a scoundrel who molests young girls while he has a teenage daughter? Personally. I would rather know the truth than live so many years of lies without wasting time. But the supervisor was unstoppable. He pestered the girl and literally growled you can yell all you want. There's no one in this wing for a long time now. Everyone's gone home. It even turns me on. Be a good girl and spoil your uncle. Relax. I'll get what I want anyway. You'll only make it worse for yourself. And you'll get hurt. Adriana cried and wriggled and then smacked Michael across the face with a resounding slap. It only made it worse. He became furious and ripped the nurse's blouse with all his might. The little buttons scattered all over the office. The scoundrel breathed heavily, anticipating the closeness, and began to pile on the poor girl with all his weight, laying her right on the desk. Adriana fumbled for an ashtray behind her and without thinking threw it at the scoundrel. He jerked backward shrieked, and crouched down in a sharp pain. Seizing the moment, Adriana dashed recklessly to the door. She fumbled for the key, opened it, and dashed out. She rushed outside, thinking feverishly that it was dangerous to go back to the ward. He would find her, and then she'd be in trouble. The street was deserted. Only one car was parked outside. It was the driver of Ethan's superintendent. He always waited late for the warden. When he saw a frightened, crying Adriana in a blouse torn down to the navel, he understood everything at once and without words. He often drove the chief to brothels and knew about his unhealthy passion for girls. Her first thought was to mind her own business, the more so she was not the first, not the last. After all, if Michael finds out, I'll be in trouble and even fire the hell out of me. Adriana sobbed and frantically turned her head, not knowing where to run or what to do. 
you couldn't get far in this condition. When she saw Ethan's car, she drummed as hard as she could on the glass and prayed with her lips. Ethan, help me, please. The boy's heart trembled and he opened the door. Quickly get in and tell me where to go. Adriana sobbed and mumbled. Thank you. What a bastard. He told me to help with the papers, and he's a bastard. I will never set foot in that clinic again. He'll kick me out for sure now. Well, let Ethan answer. I'm sorry, Adriana. Maybe you should give me the address where you live, so that I can get back without being noticed, or I'll get in trouble too. Michael rushed around the office in a rage, holding a cold glass to his forehead and shouting off, you bastard. Oh wait, I'll have you thrown out of my office tomorrow with a terrible character reference. He jumped out of the office like a madman and rushed to the office. Adriana was nowhere to be found. Then he rushed to the exit, his head was cracking with pain and a bump was growing at the sight of the blow. This made the rascal all the more infuriating. Jumping out into the street, he saw Ethan's car, opened the door sharply and shouted Adriana was getting out the other day. Where did she go? Answer. Ethan answered in surprise. How do I know I'm her babysitter? Did she go out? She ran over there. And he waved toward the bus stop. The supervisor shouted in fury. So she ran away. We have to stop her. She might say something else about me. So he frantically dialed her phone number on his cell phone. Much to Ethan's dismay, the call rang in his car. He didn't notice that the girl was so terrified that she dropped it under the seat. There was an awkward pause. Michael quickly figured it out and hissed threateningly at the driver saying you don't know anything. So why the hell is this application's phone in your car then? So you're in on it. Well, you're screwed. Ethan, you don't work here anymore, do you? Give me your car keys and get out of my face. There was no excuse. Ethan silently took the phone from Adriana's car, threw the keys on the front panel, and staggered home. When he got home, of course, his wife noticed the huge bump on his forehead and began to wail. Jesus, Michael, what happened? Where did you get that? Barely extinguishing the wave of anger, and he liked to rest beautifully. He loved casinos, expensive cognac, and pretty young girls. Many of the nurses felt this weakness of his. Some managed to get out of it cleverly, and some agreed to be his playmates. But in the open about it, of course, did not risk talking about it. And to try to complain to the chief doctor so much the more. Outwardly, the head of surgery was a man, very prominent, despite the fact that he was already over 50. He was stylishly and tastefully dressed tall, stately. He smelled of expensive perfume a mile away. All day long the young newcomer was on Michael's mind. He feverishly devised a cunning plan. How am I going to get this beauty into bed? Oh, what I'd do with her in bed? I'd have to think it over so there'd be no trouble, and no one would find out. But I won't be me if she's not mine tomorrow. Near the end of my shift, the nurse on duty shouted, Adriana, run to the supervisor's office right away. He summoned you. Adriana, elated with joy, ran. And the girls just sympathetically looked over, whispering to each other. It had all begun and all was lost. Our Adriana is not going to get away with it now. Adriana entered the office and said quietly to Michael. They called. Is something wrong? He took on a serious and concerned look and said, Adriana, you are working the night shift tomorrow, aren't you? I have a proposition for you. Could you help me sort out the paperwork just to get to the heart of the work? And I'll teach you a little bit. Agree? The girl happily replied, of course, I agree. Last night I myself thought that we need to gradually absorb, and then all at once falls on top of everything. It will be hard. Then I'll run after evening procedures at about nine o'clock. He smiled and said, all right, then you can leave tomorrow. The girl was so happy she was ready to jump to the ceiling and thought to herself, what a nice man. You shouldn't talk about him as if he doesn't miss a single skirt. I think he's very polite and cultured. Yay. Tomorrow I'll start getting into work. I can't wait. When she left the office, 
the head of the department happily rubbed his hands, saying, Well, all caught a chick. That's what I'll be relaxing tomorrow. He was already mentally imagining pictures of future intimacy. His insides were burning with desire. All the next day, Adriana could not really concentrate on household chores and was worried. How should I behave with him? I have to show off my knowledge so that he did not think that he appointed me for nothing. I'll listen more and talk less. If I don't say something I shouldn't say. At exactly 9 p.m., Adriana was under the manager's office, breathed deeply and knocked. An audible response was heard. Yes, yes, come in, Adriana. She stepped in unabashedly. On the desk was indeed a pile of papers, outpatient records, statements, bills. Michael invited. Well, why don't you just sit down at the table and start sorting through the papers? I'll get us something to eat. You must have been working like a bee and haven't had time to eat yet. Adriana was embarrassed. Well, to be honest, I haven't had time, but I could use some tea. I know. Thank you. She sat down at the table, took off her medical cap, and began to quickly review the paperwork. At that time, Michael quietly walked up to the door and turned it on the key, closing it two turns. Then, from behind, he quietly walked up to Adriana and began hugging her by the shoulders with an onslaught. She was stunned by the surprise and wanted to jump up, but she didn't. The frail and petite girl could not compete with a tall adult man. The rascal sharply turned her to his face and tried to kiss her while roughly touching her hair. Adriana screamed in fury. Have you gone mad? What do you think you are doing? Let me out immediately. This is low and disgusting. Who she was and where she was from was unknown. The child was in such a state of neglect that she looked no more than a year old. She was so small and thin, like Thumbelina. Betty at first just pitied her and tried to feed her better and give her a little more attention than the others. The baby didn't talk at all. It was obvious that no one was really taking care of her, but the little girl willingly went into her arms and absorbed all the skills and knowledge, like a sponge. Betty was the first to notice that the little girl loves to play doctor. She treats dolls and animals. When she grew up, she started asking the woman to bring her books and medical magazines, and she could spend hours happily studying anatomy and Latin. More than once, Betty asked the supervisor to adopt Adriana, but she kept telling her not to. At your age, you can't adopt a child with all your diseases. You live in a small room. You have a small salary, no husband. You know, it's not likely to work out. Of course, the woman understood. That's just the way it was. In her youth, she had committed a terrible sin as a woman. And then, no matter how much she waited for a child, God never gave her one. My husband died early after a heart attack, so she lived alone with a cat. Many different children passed through her hands. She pitied and loved them all in her own way. One could say that working as an orphanage educator was her whole life. But when she took Adriana in her arms, she felt an avalanche of affection for the poor abandoned child. At first the woman was as angry with herself as she could be. The soul will get used to it. And then what to do? How do I explain to her that I am not a mother? Don't you dare give a child false hopes, treat her like everyone else. But no matter how hard she tried to control herself, the woman did not show her emotions. It was as soon as Adriana climbed into her arms and snuggled up. Immediately, the tears began to flow from her eyes in a hail of treacherous tears. She kissed and hugged the little girl. I returned the favor. I often tried to sneak a chocolate candy into her pocket. And for her birthday, I used my paycheck to buy her clothes in the evenings, and I worked extra hard with her, putting all my heart into it. Adriana never grew up. She remained small, but very handsome. Her brown and beautiful hair and long curled eyelashes made her look like a doll. Betty took care of Adriana, all the way to her graduation from the orphanage. She made sure she got a nice room in a good neighborhood. And through her acquaintances, she got her into medical school and upon graduation, into a private clinic. The salaries here were higher and there were better prospects. 
Adriana, after parting with Betty, came home and kept dreaming. She sat in an armchair and thought, well, at last I am an orphan. Luck was smiling. How wonderful. Everyone will be envious of me. I will be strict, but fair. Tomorrow, I must start sorting out my paperwork in order to get to the core of my work quickly. I'll put on a tight dress and high heels. Yes, I have to remember to put my hair up nicely. I'm not just a nurse now, but a whole head nurse. The next morning, Adriana showed up to work in a high-pitched and airy mood. The girls said hello and started whispering among themselves. Where is it that our orphan was born? Is it a holiday? What holiday? Do not you know anything? Our lover promised her the position of head nurse. She's a fool. She's naive and believed it. She doesn't know what she'll have to pay. And they giggled together. The chief of staff entered the residence room and glanced predatorily at Adriana thought to himself. Oh, a good looking figure. Just a looker. She's got it all. You can tell she's not sophisticated in matters of love. That's it. And aloud said everyone to the briefing, don't dig, we're late as it is. The girls looked at each other and giggled. Everyone in the department knew. Michael is a surgeon of God and a professional, but he was also a terrible philanderer and womanizer.